interesting. Now, before I stamp these papers, make sure this information is correct. All right, so we're going to fix the class for one because uh, that's okay. That's not at all what I want. Um, so we're actually going to do something that is very special in this game. We're going to make a custom class. Um, and just a moment while I pick out the right thing. Um, sorry, I just had to double check something. Um, I probably cut this out, but I labored over my decision to pick the lady, the lady, the, uh, the lady because of the personality. Um, uh, but the endurance buff is what I actually wanted. So we are going to go with of these three, we like combat and we want so let me go through these strength it's strength it's strength from every other rpg you've ever played intelligence is your casting willpower is basically magic stamina agility is how man is uh other it's essentially dex speeds how fast you run endurance is regular stamina charisma and then luck um picking luck here is actually pretty good for complete beginners because affects every action you do in a small way um everything in this game is based on die rolls so rolling dice it, dice are being rolled by the computer every time you click the buttons and so if your stats are low that means you'll fail a lot but if luck is high you can still definitely 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 kick some ass which is why a lot of people actually go with luck but i want endurance and i want agility because I really can't stand being slow. <laughs> um, so, first of all, we're going to go with Longblade. And we're going to go with Block. So, these is, this is going to be our bread and butter. We're going to be using Swords. And we're going to be using Shields. Medium Armor is kind of worthless. Because there's only so many Medium Armor sets in this game. Um, so we're actually going to go with light armor because there's a lot more of those for the same reason. I'm not going to go with heavy armor because it's good to pick one or the other. Um, heavy armor can be really great, especially because everything's based on die rolls. Having better armor means that you just won't get hit, especially if you've got a shield. Um, however, I want to be defensive and quick because no one does that. Um, for the next one, I'm going to go with athletics. Athletic skill trains and conditions one for running and swimming. Skilled athletes move long and short distances over land with speed and efficiency. They swim swiftly underwater. Um, yeah, we're going to need that, fellas. And then... Short blade. It'll... My cat's going absolutely bonanzas. Honey, will you get that from him? He's got a whole wire coat hanger. Um. Anyway. Yeah, uh, early on there's a lot, a lot, a lot of daggers that you're going to get because the game's like, hey, you're a tutorial character. Here is a dagger. Um. So naturally, short plate is good. There's also another couple of things that I definitely want. Next, we're going to want... Uh, uh, alchemy. Um, alchemy is just completely stupid in this game. It is bananas. It is, I can't believe that they let this game come out with this. And for the same reason, we're going to pick enchantment. Like, remember that stuff that you would do in, in Skyrim? Where you would drink a bunch of potions to make your enchanting better, and then enchant a bunch of gear to make your alchemy better? and then make the loop happen 20 times 
That was after they nerfed it in Oblivion. And Oblivion was after they nerfed it from this game. This game is hilarious. This game allows you to become a physical god pretty quickly. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's, yeah. Spear is okay. Um, I just don't like them. So instead, I'm going to go with Mjarksman. And I'm going to poke at things with a little bow. Um, Marksman is useful because it'll allow me to have a ranged attack without using magic. Because I don't actually have a lot of magical stuff here even though I do intend to use it just because magic is really good in this game. Um, I don't want it to be like part of my class. So I'm actually just going to have a bow as my main backup to hit cliff runners and stuff like that. Um, so armor is how you wear and make armor. It's how you repair things as well, because this is a very, fallout durability system of like oh, i hit you with my sword 20 times and a broken half these are just the armor classes these are clubs and maces uh longer swords axes spears and running um this is item enchantment this is your normal like nuking magic this is your buff or weird magic this is your stealth magic this is getting buddies to help you this is this is a weird school because it was actually combined with conjuration. Um, like these are two separate schools of magic and they just kind of squished all the spells from mysticism into conjuration because they're very similar. Restoration is healing, alchemy is potions, and unarmored is how mages defend themselves. Um, security is lockpicking, sneak is sneaking, acrobatics is only jumping and not running. Um, I would love if these two were the same one, but I guess it's to balance these out. Um, however, like, they could have just taken out some of the other ones. Like, I'm looking at this and I'm like, yeah, the changes they made in Oblivion and later Skyrim are pretty decent for streamlining character creation. Um, like, making Mercantile and Speechcraft one stat, brilliant, thank you. Making Sword one stat, good, thanks making making hand to hand not even a stat that's cool i like that um so honestly i want to pick speechcraft for the role playing but it doesn't actually matter and i'm gonna be wearing a ring that gives me more speechcraft all the time um i guess i'll pick mysticism just to have it because this is useful to be able to grind with um at least i think so and then i'll pick yeah, i'll pick acrobatics I am a min maxer. Next. Um, the lady. Yep, yep, yep. So, what this actually means these are my big boy stats. These numbers are determined by how high I rank them in my class menu and the natural stats that I have. So short blade and long blade are very high because I put all my numbers up for my class and then dark elves are good at it in, on their own. Um, alchemy is low because dark elves aren't really good at that. And then all of these, the fives are just my default skills. Everything else is something I have a bonus from either from the stats I picked out so like, oh, I gave myself high strength, so my axe is a little better. Or uh, I, I'm just a dark elf and that's what they get. So I now have endurance, personality, and fire resistance. And then I can summon that. And I, I should have a spell. Whatever, it doesn't actually matter. My luck is 40, my strength is 40, my intelligence is 40. My willpower is 30, my agility is 50, so is my speed. And my endurance is 75, my personality is 55. Um, that's good. I have a stats menu. Right-clicking. Yep, right-clicking does your menus. Show your papers to the captain when you exit to get your release fee. Oh, he's so bored about it. Yep, there's my ID. For the release by Emperor Uriel Septim the Seventh's Degree to the release of Vardenfell in the province of Morrowind, 
Redden Gnadab, a Dark Elf Minmaxer, signed Skokutikisk Ergala, agent of the Seda Need Imperial Census and Excise, 16th of Last Seed, 3rd Era, 427. Got an inventory menu. Yeah, here's my stuff. Yeah. So, um, that's more one episode one, everyone. I guess I'll save it here. Nope, I can't. Guess I'll keep playing. Continue through to the next building and talk to Celis Gravius. Um, Lord, this is a 40 minute episode, huh? You should learn how to do combat. Pick the dagger. Got an iron dagger. Yep, so that's combat, everyone. Um,. Can't save my game. All right. Sure, yeah, I'll take that. Fiskar, don't think I've forgotten our wager. I want this dagger sharp as a scamp's claw by morning. Imperial. Hey, this game can be really dark, so. I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna try to make sure that I have more stuff on me than I actually do. Hey, Flynn, hell yeah. Yeah, that's something. Hell yeah. Just take everything. Who's here to stop me? Um, I'll be doing my best to read all of these. The Firmament by Fulk. The stars of Tamriel are divided into 13 constellations. Three of them are the major constellation, known as the Guardians. These are the ones that I mentioned. Uh, these are the Warrior, the Mage, and the Thief. Each of the Guardians protects its three charges from the 13th constellation, the Serpent. Um, that's kind of a, a part of how, like, hey, the Trinity has their Trinity. Don't let a fourth one in. Um, when the sun rises near one of the constellations, it's said that that is the constellation's season. Each constellation has a season of one month. The serpent has no season, for it moves about in the heavens, usually threatening one of the other constellations. The warrior. The warrior is the first guardian constellation, and he protects his charges during their seasons. The warrior's own season is last seed, when his strength is needed for the harvest. His charges are the lady, the steed, and the lord. Those born under the sign of the warrior are skilled with weapons, but prone to short tempers. The mage is a guardian constellation whose season is rain hands, Rain's Hand when Magicka was first used by men. His charges are the apprentice, the golem, and the ritual. Those born of the mage have more magic for talent, more magic and talent for all kinds of spell casting, but are often arrogant and absent-minded. The thief is the last guardian constellation, and her season is the darkest month of the evening star. Her charges are the lover, the shadow, and the tower. Those born under the sign of the thief are not typically thieves, although they take risks more often and only rarely from harm. They will run out of luck eventually, and rarely live as long as those born under the other signs. Serpent. Serpent wanders about in the sky and has no season, although its motions are predictable to a degree. No characteristics are common at all to, born un to those born under the sign of the serpent. Those born under this sign are the most blessed and the most cursed. The lady is one of the warrior's charges, and her season is heartfire. Those born under the sign of the lady are kind and tolerant. The steed is one of the warrior's charges, and her season is mid-year. Those born under the, scene the sign of the steed are impatient and always hurrying from one place to the other. The Lord sees in his first seed, and he oversees all of Tamriel during the planting. Those born under the sign of the Lord are stronger and healthier than those born under, under other signs. The Apprentice. The Apprentice's season is sun's height. I'm looking at the recording time now, and I'm really just going to have to cut this episode in half. It's really long. Um, 
Those born of the Son of the Apprentice have a special affinity for magic of all kinds, but are more vulnerable to magic as well. The Autronach, also called the Golem, is one of the mage charges. Its season is sun's dusk. Those born under this sign are natural sorcerers with deep reserves of magic, but they can't generate magic of their own. Ritual is one of the mage charges, and its season is second star. Those born under this sign have a variety of abilities depending on the aspects of the moons and the divines. The lover is a thief charge, and her season is sun's dawn. Those born under the sign of the lover are graceful and passionate. The shadow season is second seed. The shadow grants those born under her sign the ability to hide in shadows. And the tower is one of the thief's charges, and its season is frostfall. Those born under the sign of the tower have a knack for finding gold and can open locks of all kinds. Um... I think that's everything. Oh, hello. Bone meal. I will try to leave some stuff. Uh, I won't sleep just yet because I have the DLC installed. All right, wooden door. You got a map. So this is the map. It's pretty big. Part of that is only because we run so slow. Um, we could return that to its rightful owner if we want to. I mean, maybe a little later. Alright, I'm just rechecking everything. Just making sure I've scoured this room. Alright. Oh yeah, so this appears to be the warrior... Thief and Mage. I never actually looked at these. They're really cool. Because that's obviously just a big old, you know, that's the, that's the Emperor. Oh, man. Damn. I'll be back for you, I think. Don't want to risk it for that biscuit. That would be a pretty penny. First, let me take your identification papers. Thank you. What of your arrival only reached me yesterday. I'm Celis Gravius, but my background's not important. I'm here to welcome you to Morrowind. I'm a knight errant of the Imperial Legion. Yes, you're in Morrowind. I don't know why you're here or why you were released from prison and shipped here. But your authorization comes directly from Emperor Uriel Septim the Seventh himself, and I don't need to know any more than that. When you leave this office, you're a free man. But before you go, I have instructions on your duties from the Emperor. Uriel Septim is the Emperor. According to my instructions, he personally authorized your release from the prison and your delivery here. It's all very mysterious. That's the way the Empire works. Silence. Secrecy. Let not the left hand know what the right is doing. Of course this is the Empire. This is the Vardenfeld district of the province of Morrowind, and Morrowind has been part of the Empire for almost 400 years. Current Emperor is Uriel Septim, 24th of the Septim line. You haven't been prisoned that long, have you? Nothing wrong with your head, is there? Men said you were acting a little strange when they brought you in from the ship. Let's see what our duties are. This package came with the news of your arrivals. You are to take it to Caius Cosades in the town of Balmora. Go to the South Pole Corner Club and ask for Caius. They'll know where to find him. Serve him as you would serve the Emperor yourself. I have a letter for you, and a disbursement to your name. Uh, Valmora is north of Sedanine. Road passes through Pelagiad village and Fort Pelagiad into a deep ravine. Passes Fort Moonmouth and runs west across the Odai River into Balmora. South, Club Corner, South Wall Corner Club is in southeast Balmora on the east side of the river. That's why it's the South Wall on the east side. It's in the southeast. 
Uh, for more detailed direct directions, talk to a lone scout at Ariel's Trade House here in Sidonian. But take my advice. You're new here. Take the silt stride at Valmora. Fast, cheap, safe. Cross the bridge and head east. You can't miss it. Silt striders carry passengers and cargo between settlements on Vodenfell. Fares depend on distance to be traveled. Silt striders are giant insects. A compartment for passengers and cargo is hollowed out from the creature's shell. The driver directs the beast by directly manipulating exposed organs and tissues. That's so cool. Silt striders travel between Aldrin, Balmora, Sidonine, Saran, Genesis, Mulagmar, Mag Margon, and North Landing near Vivek. Um, I think that's everything. Yeah, cool. Goodbye. Press J to use your journal and review what you've been told. Good luck. All right. <laughs> I've uh, never noticed that plate in there until now. And now that I know it's in there, I really want to go get it. Oh, you're naked. Spare me. <laughs> Yeah, that's the silt strider. Look at their big old bug legs. And yes, they are actually insects because they have six legs and what appears to be three segments. Um, yeah, that's the first episode. I should probably cut it in half about halfway through character creation. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do a big old save here. Uh, these are my test saves. Yeah, that's everything. Um, that's an episode, everyone. Thanks for watching. <laughs>